Greetings to the Front Range Renaissance in Colorado and environs. Very happy to be reading to you from the heart of New York City, my other home. And I want to start with a piece written in Colorado uh, during the stressful, fraught, uh, sad, yet empowering space of uh, pandemic time this kind of uh, weird aporia. And I was doing a lot of stargazing from my yard. And so I'd like to read this to you first. I wanted to tell you about my meditations on Jupiter. Grasping at fragments, I want to tell you at a distance, distanced about the recital and its amplification. I thought Unicum in the varying versions, urgent meditations on Jupiter, my remotest wandering, its chilly motion, ice and patterns, striations seem to be models of tissue and imprint, solicitude, solicitudes. In Persian, it might be a sign of geomancy. What is the sand you imagine trapped in your echo chamber, a telescope of no small size, a clipsedra of wondrous watery proportion, the greatest clock of tidal universe. What can you know? Recital as a dispatch, as a way of signaling a spirit. This is a meditation on time made of glass. When the electricity stops, the clocks go off on their own, those not under surveillance. Switched calendars in the new technology, they will place an owl in your classroom to keep track of your study, your payments, your assignments. Are you on time for class? In an alienated classroom, the talismans of your own mind. And you feel split in time. You feel your head dizzying as your eyes land on the handmade machine of words, repeating forms from Dante's Inferno, dancing in a circle of left hand turns, tuning up on the day of reckoning as you ascend. I love the syncretic. I want everything to pile up in solitude, counting backwards. Counting forwards into all the next centuries. The time you thought you were on and then there were paused interventions all through your life. Ventricles, I need advantage and ventilators. I need vehicles as in the lesser and greater vehicles of Dharma. The recital of Hai Ibn Yaksan was written during his detention in the fortress of Fardajan. The narrator or author Ibn Sina speaks of a time when his soul was at home and could go out to the familiar, but finding places that lay hidden in his own city. Captivity in a cosmic crypt, a dark pit in which also the pilgrim of the recital of Occidental exile is stuck. An inward escape, call it. Solicitude summons high Ibn Yaksan's vision, waiting for the invitation to leave the prison whose jailers know not they are themselves captives. What is imprint in a brain? Symbols, allegories. What can we learn of carceral in a book? A day in the can when you want plutonium off your front range when you want to control the narrative of toxins in land, in water, the cellular throb and breath of toxins, and you protest all day, you protest all months, all years, all thousands of years. 
deformed sheep born at dawn, an eye missing in a dispatch. The gasp is echoing through time here in capsule. Study the surfaces of sand in an age that crumbles like sand. Count the eyes on potatoes. Study a field chart of matres of mothers. Write a book that opens to the sky. Lost the pencil for my little requests in the library. But conjure Hermes Trismegistus who witnessed the angel Jibril in a dream. My chambers are like cubicles in the library, the shelves swaying as in an hallucination. But I had to leave that all behind. I still hold a key to the research room and pray they will let me in again. Pray they will let me study scripture, the rise and fall of everything, and the age of reason again, again. Not a philosopher, I'm reluctant to get loose with poetical intuitions, but they are all of the above. What have I admitted here into this cavity? How to be urgent at remote control? Shake a dying body awake for an instant? A happy recognition? Mysteriously guided to text that fluctuates in the mind? Comes and goes, goes and comes. Lost that little pencil for my requests at the library. But they arrive, the answers, as if telepathically. Fragments, as I've said, on the nature of prediction, there is none arising. The crystal mirror is cloudy. Watching the child on the small screen, she is learning K. She is writing K the first time. I think of Aya Sophia, that elder library where it is recorded this kind of memory. The first K of knowledge. Her name is Cora. And these were the categories of her studying. She studied wandering. She studied the roaming days of cold light. Mind not caught yet by the death clouds. Not caught yet by the breath of death. Not caught breath of life yet. Impelling days. Mind in the heavens with distant moons. Enceladus, her oceans hidden under icy crust. Lift the curtain and you may see the future of water. Crisis, crisis, jeopardy, precarity, propulsion, and scrying, scrying. Hazards, restless, brutal patrols, corner of a watery eye, and keening, keening. Io, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto, as top moons for the dark time. Oral tradition told the future that this was ancestral transmission. How to be alone with the four rotations. How not to go mad. I thought her thrill of discovery, the child's first instinct. She will be in this, looking up. But we are not awaiting Martian travel. We notice the patterns of solar systems. What is identity in this naming? Make a list, lifting the supermoons out of a host of 70, or is it 79 supermoons now? The counting of so many moons, so many moons. Volcanoes and snowfields of Io, a moon of fire and ice. Colors would show red, orange, yellow, black, white, smallest of Galileans, then Europa in circles with cracks and fissures that would haunt your notebooks, 20 to 180 million years old, a young face, Ganymede, highly cratered, and light grooved terrain across her face, 
Callisto, probably unchanged since its formation. How could you ever guess? Callisto, Callisto, out of the radar of Jupiter's magnetic field, beyond Jupiter's radiation belt, untethered. More to study each year, a moon in your life. Reflectivity, that's the dispatch here. Perhaps oceans beneath the surface could flourish with life. A wandering mendicant in my heart, and this was what I wanted to say to you. All the mendicants coming after, crying for all the others in plague to know truth of suffering, could be signaling the end of entire civilizations. You go studying, go studying. The plague of Cyprian, the plague that ended serfdom, the plague of London, shortest in a year, only a hundred thousand dead. Think with me now on all the friends, all the last rites for those afflicted, AIDS. Like the strike of a large gong. Gong, 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 the fallen. Solipsism is my instrument for seeing. We keep thinking about the future. This fluctuating uncertain magic is apocalyptic in its nature and we are forgetting our rituals. Our many rituals. Jupiter glowing out there right now sitting here. It's 3.18 a.m. in mountain time. Look out my hatch on the sky an ingenious bubble of shelter. See the comet glide across your wounded galaxies because you have a mind to project that heart broken song. Evidently, celestial physics and astronomy define the soul's itinerary like a comet. If you want to greet it that way with an angel as a guide, escape right now. Traces are discernible in the recital of Hai Ibn Yaksan, realizing a kind of transmutation where there is interiorization of the cosmos, of emergence, as is said, from the cosmic crypt the recital is imploding in on itself. What is the data? What is the data? An enveloping sphere to save phenomena, a body's motion considered in longitude, in latitude, swiftness and slowness, proximity and distance from the earth. Here, us again, we think like that, our earth. I keep saying distanced, distanced, us as homocentric to the center of the earth. Seven spheres and then there was the eighth enveloped and the whole was the sphere of the fixed stars. Would that be absolute? Why would anyone want that? But the moderns, followers of Ptolemy, added a ninth, a starless sphere, a dark, starless sphere, communicating that the astronomer must try to solve the notion of an unmoving Earth. What will we continue to know when science leaves us stuttering? Turn off the light, enter that little cavity, find a corner, a movie theater, in that cavity of your brain unsafe in 2020, in 2021, in 2022, in 2023, in 2024, in 2043, in 2073, in 2093, in 2094, in 2095, in 2096, in 2097, in 20, 
98 in 20, 99, 20, 99 We are not yet born. We are not yet in the world. There is not yet a world. Things have not been made. The reason for being has not been found. Antonin Artaud, circa 1945, looking over the destruction of World War II. So this is a text written for a libretto for an opera called Black Lodge. And this is called Strange Light in the Lodge. And it's after a description by Anais Nin, who observed the extraordinary French poet artist Antonin Artaud performing an enactment of the theater and its plague, and this was in Paris. Strange light in the lodge, repository of dark memory, spectral gesture. In 1933, Artaud performed an enactment of the theater and its plague. Body as future memory, as inscription, as keeper, as spectacle for the masses. His face was lean. The visionaries thrust to be incomprehensible, ensorcelled, the plague everywhere, death in the streets, death in the garrets, in the back alleys, in carts of doom, in bardo, the edges between life and death. His hands were trembling, eyes rolling into the back of his head, looking inward, transported to an excruciating intensity. Arto in the Black Lodge, cave of flickering shadows, sequestered. And is there a doctor in the house? Is there a doctor in the house that we all see the demon plague take hold that our hearts break or that fear turns us away, us too. Could that be every one of us too in the Anthropocene? I've got those Anthropocene, Anthropocene blues. We lose control. How close are we to dark animalia, to a void, to an abyss? Oh, generative cyclic flow and grind of meat wheel that we decompose, lose breath, and still can sing. Antonin Artaud's apotheosis, palpable dark spirit babble in the theatrical light. Oh, the dark lodge. Oh, the dark lodge. Oh, the dark lodge. And Artaud is center stage, shape-shifting show of demons, all the alchemical nuance as glass shatters, people in panic as he gasped, afraid of their own demise, people in panic, afraid of their own demise, jeering and hissing at the great poet Antonin Artaud, La Peste, they call out as it sweeps the land, a crux in your mirror, La Peste. La Peste, the poet summoning and summoned, the poet summoning and summoned, poet dwelling in his and in your own gut and burning throat. La Peste, La Peste, La Peste, La Peste, La Peste. It's a beautiful collage by poet Louis Warsh and collagiste who passed away during these last uh, year and a half. And uh, we used it as the cover for this beautiful collaboration, which is called Goslings to Prophecy. And it was written with Emma Gomez, 
a wonderful former student of the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics at Naropa University, and uh, published in this gorgeous edition by Joseph Braun of Loon, the Loon Press. And uh, she and I were working during the Carrier Waves summer of 2020, and we wanted to honor the various poets who had uh, come and participated in our first uh, virtual summer writing program after some 47 years of being live and in community. And um, I will read a couple of these sonnets. And one of our workshop leaders was teaching the sonnet. So we decided to honor that form. And we tried to stick with it in a formal way. And then we expanded to uh, these kind of off sonnets. So with Emma Gomez and Joseph Braun and Lewis Warsh, I'll read from Gosling's to Prophecy. This first one is for Alice Notley. Dark crescents, summer musings from disuse. Diaphanous strength catch her firefall. Immolation regenerates retreat, redder, greener, grayer, sarcophagi. Fixation implores a stray rupture clock. I see the other woman, I hear her name. Those little blue dogs, Trey, Blanche, and Sweetheart, unencumbered by our slumbered systems, tooth and tear, they begin to take part in new sites of study, eradicated, fears from long, a grieving art. Oh, Mercury, ardent, frayed, a poison if it brightens, substitute a retrograde sonneteer. Substitute a retrograde sonneteer as we hear Alice catch fire in a dream. And this is for Tongo Eisen Martin. A strong exchange of liberation pulled up from a montage of cruel fallacies, a dialectical remain, jump cut, light up dark, a system, a prism slain. Don't stand by silently, but activate like you can share pulse with witchy chorus. Allegories, palinodes won't take hold. Epics fail us, O commendatore. This one's on me. When I went to the place where Mussolini was hung near Lago, a band of mourners gathered in the light not so long ago, and here the playground of statues will stalk us. Oh, ghost, oh, damn dusty supremacy's philology. And this next for Cecilia Vicuña. I chose the foraging part, and I tried hunting for dandelions to steal from bees, but only found two, so I foraged for sound. Before my fickle device died, I took this morning of loons and callings. Leave it to birds, their rules, forms dallying, in syllables humming their sacred songs, which we sing when we don't know what to say. Who do you love, O oh, counterinsurgent? Ecology, the place, oikos and field. Someone is tired, their cheap device died. A battalion of ants at cocktail hour. Sepical, sweet, organizing tactics. They teach us how to keen and fight and love. This is for C.A. Conrad. Animated time. Organized buck moon, you think of entanglement, remember a wrestling correlation in the grove. Nomads back into lost balletic night, a scar, a skin, a tones, a strike, a spine, double reed, apricot, wood, splintered time. Some crystal things happen in good weather or break a frame to death to fall in place. Memory acts on the present wound, whether dirge to carry and disavowal, distill a still whether I trace shadows or split open to anticipate breach, labeled before storing, indexed in song, the one whose fault will find a sabotage. This is for Asiya Wadud. Sweat of workers on bleak legs edge and men in carceral orange, my precious treasure. This is the time to scavenge near the gates. Lisa Jarnot taught us about dumpster diving. Edible plants are out there by the old mill stream, a blue meadow close to ute tracks. I'm back in dust bowl, long lamentations, a pale screed, faded, gilded appetite. Create and edit starvation. Don't stop. 
Can you clear out the world application? Zigzag fragile steps, melancholia, humble mist, who ashes in capital will need the moving imagination through everyone a bright season traces. And this is for Lisa Charnot. We will find obsession too, dear Lisa, reading gold, pretty scriptures on the screen. Lisa holding the cantos, our brave Lisa. Lisa of the elves and stitching of them, they do so. And Lisa in her elf cap. Lisa and I will just say to Jay, hey, it's easy, be more of a feminist. In support of our blue revolution, a sweet panegyric for sane Lisa, a breach in my Concordia, and will be Lisa to the rescue. Keep us safe from it all, safe from extinction. Paul Valerie stole the first of those lines and I nailed him for that. I did, Lisa. And lastly, for Lady Long Soldier. Again, reading from Gosling's to Prophecy. This death I mourn has taken from me. I will grieve George Floyd in his wake, the weight, a split as wide as tomb. We now keep wide our silence. We can't reach new words to write. Panic to emerge from what we cover. Taken from us our reticence, a glance to stretch a need to share what we bury or cloak our urgent cast in double hues. Unveil upheaval, trade in these old clothes that no longer fit us. Garments outgrown, this urgent death to mourn has left behind an ocean in its wake. Clear, vast expanse, possible horizon gliding, we approach towards without abandon to say your name. And this last uh, text is called, This is the Antithesis Reality. When the mode of the music changes, the walls of the city shake. And again, so grateful to be reading for the book festival in my beloved other home, close to the Continental Divide, to, an, to all the poets and creative energy there, and to all the students, and all the people making books, uh, so important. It's an amazing uh, turf for uh, poetry in this time, in this world. So salute the front range and dedicated to Diane de Prima, poet, publisher, printer, activist, who also passed in these past uh, months in what I consider a credible time of loss in our poetry communities, but also a reminder and an inspiration to continue to go to the work that uh, presents an alternative reality about how we can live and breathe and love and uh, keep the world safe for poetry and help wake the world up to itself. So thank you all. This is the antithesis reality for Diane de Prima. We're coming out of our little theaters of hope and fear to a city near you. We'll breathe again on the streets and liberate the hall of justice. And we are the antithesis reality. All is brought to transparency. Twilight cannot be delayed. This is the antithesis reality. It's a deluge of fire, of climate apocalypse, watching the bloody moons and magenta suns of dust and smoke dynamite the sky roiling in polite society, in a gentleman's agreement, in the sick corridors of corruption, where the fix is in, the fix is in, the fix is in, and nano-racism and hydraulic racism haunt the premises. But this is the antithesis reality coming at you. Can't pull the wool over antithesis reality's eyes. The security state thrives on insecurity and a war on daily life itself. 
Call in the paramilitary, summon the Space Force, and put a token woman on the moon. We're taking down oligarchies' assault, antithesis reality against psychopathic data flows, damming up rabbit holes of disinformation, won't swallow any snake oil hypocrisy, any fraud or mendacity. This is the revving up of antithesis reality, vaccinating hate mongers. This is the antithesis reality. We ain't no foggy mirage. We're slamming your politics of de-civilization. We're the antithesis reality here to reinvent resistance and to risk revolution not risk lives of tender beings in times of plague. We're coming out of our little boxes, our little frames, our little niches of hope and fear. We're coming up out of our little boxes, our little frames of hope and fear. We're coming up to a city near you, a town, a crossroads. We're turning down the static, voting against capital's extraction of all from all. We're masked and mouthing the takedown, voting against ugly abusive language. We are the antithesis reality, and we like to fall in love with whomever we want and dance in contrapuntal rhythm. We are the antithesis reality, a refuge, voting against reification of land, of living in regenerative earth, voting against that reification of all peoples, of all organisms, and of water and air, and voting against borders, and voting against drones, and cages, and torture in jail, voting against the military, nocturnal, techno surveillance complex in which power gathers and congeals and pools and kills. Oh, bare life, nothing left to hide. Humanity, keep faith, come reanimate the world. Oh, tentacular nation, we're working overtime. This is the antithesis reality and we are here and rising and rising power gathers on the flip side of the mobster's cheap penny vote against brutality xenophobia we cheer the proliferation of difference because we are the antithesis reality and we are entangled in the beautiful rhizome of difference we're spooky attraction at a distance 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 growing closer don't lose your mind. Don't lose your mind.